We are going to New York. New York. New York. New York. New York City. To celebrate 10 years of the wonderful charity. Your sporting family changed by running the New York Half Marathon. With a wonderful group of people. An amazing bunch of people. Amazing, inspiring people. An incredible group of people, each with their own story to tell. Um, and I, we all feel incredibly blessed and lucky to be doing it. It's 10 years. <laughs> I said if we're going to go somewhere and have a special party, it needs to be in a park. And obviously, just thinking globally, Central Park is quite an iconic place to go and, and people heard, uh, most have heard of. But because it's, it's a long way away and because it's different, but also we're doing a half marathon and it's St. Patrick's weekend. There'll be thousands and thousands of people together, but also not just the runners and our family and friends are coming. That's going to make it really, truly special. Just by the sheer numbers, there's 40 of us going. But it had to be special, it had to be different, and it had to be really quite iconic. So I uh, discovered that, uh, you know, maybe that New York Half Marathon was going to happen uh, quite soon after we completed the Paris Half Marathon. And it was, uh, oh, shall we do New York? And it was like, Okay, again, you don't realise that that actually is going to materialise. At the beginning, when I was told, my wife told me, and I thought, us, oh, she's have a laugh. I thought, there's no way this is going to happen, do you know what I mean? Because she does wind me up a little bit. So um, she said to me, um, do you fancy doing a New York half marathon? Really? And then Hayley Clark came up and said, really, this is true. Oh, yeah, too right. And uh, to give some back to the sport and family change as well. So. I thought, yeah, I've got to do it. And then once I said I'd do it, I could tell my wife suddenly thought, yeah, I think I'd do it as well. I never thought in a million years that I would actually be di directly involved with Sporting Family Change myself. Um, but in 2020, obviously we had uh, lockdown and COVID and I had um, a pretty tough time myself. Both my parents were in hospital, um, in separate hospitals and I sort of, my mum actually died um, and I felt I needed a little bit of support so I realised that but I didn't really want to go down the route of counselling and sort of taking tablets and actually coincidentally um, Sporting Family Change reached out to the community in lockdown and offered support to parents and I answered that email and I was lucky enough to um, be involved from there on in. And this is where I am today. Very, very lucky. It's an absolute privilege. And how lucky am I to be able to go into New York, doing a half marathon with an amazing group of people from all walks of life, whether they've ran before or never ran a half marathon, and that sense of togetherness kindness, loveliness, and just feeling part of a, a whole community and team together. I am so excited now for it. Woke up on the Friday morning, walked into the terminal, wheeling a suitcase down, everyone was there waiting, and it was like we were all reunited together. Um, everyone was excited um, and I was like, this is it, it's happening. So everyone got through check-in okay, everyone got through security okay. Flight was fine, a lot of laughter on the plane. There was a few people on the trip that were speaking to the cabin crew and they were telling them why we were going over to New York. I don't think what we do is, is nothing out the ordinary but they seemed surprised at the kindness and really liked the kindness that, that we'd shown. So they, yeah, they wrote us a card and that was, we just didn't expect it. Got to New York and it was just, everyone just kept looking up, looking up at the, the buildings, taking it all in, it was lovely. On the Saturday, we went to the expo. Everyone got their numbers and 
think that's when it hit people that they were actually doing a half marathon. Um, some tears of, I think, all their hard work coming together um, and excitement. Hi, Vince Meredith, and I'm here in New York City to actually get here at last after all the training we've done and all the excitement of thinking about coming here. We're actually here with some great people, brilliant. At this exact moment, I am feeling so, so excited. It's now incredibly real. I think the best part, actually, coming from the heart, it really is all going to be really, really good. It's just going to be amazing to know that we've all succeeded. We've all trained really, really hard. Some of us have had doubts, but I know we will all succeed. Firstly, for me, um, well, it's not so much me, it's more doing it with my wife, really. So, just hope we can share together forever, really. <clears throat> oh, God, how am I feeling? Um, I'm really excited. I am starting to get nervous, just picked our numbers up uh, and the merch. Um, so yeah, a little bit apprehensive, just want to get it done really, still can't quite believe it's happening tomorrow. The morning of the half marathon, we all had to meet in the lobby at 4.30 a.m and got down there and there was one particular lady, Kim, who we've had the privilege of knowing for many, many years. And for her, this was just something she thought she would never do. It was her and Vince's honeymoon and the lift doors open and she's just crying her eyes out, like uncontrollably crying her eyes out and there was nothing any of us could do. We just kept giving her a hug. The morning of the New York Half Marathon, gosh, how can I explain it? It, it was certainly mixed emotions for all involved. And actually when we left, we left very early and we walked about 35 minutes to where we needed to get to, to, to the start line. And actually I, I suddenly broke down because I was, missing my my girls but you know everyone was like come on it's, you know we're in it we're in it together and it did we we really did get each other through oh well from the start it was like manic and um I just, we, had, we kept each other going at the start, but the heat and everything, it got harder and harder as we got into it, but we managed to keep each other going. I think it's, the run was tougher than I thought it was gonna be, because the Lemon Hills, I thought New York was flat. We were supposed to be running in sub-zero temperatures. And I don't know what the temperature was today. I think it was probably nearly 20. So to be running in that is just like, although it was tough, it was really good. But the best bit for me was running along Times Square. Times Square, what a f nice. Sorry, to just it. It's closed. Everyone's like shouting for you. And you're just like, wow. As soon as you came into New York, and seeing all the buildings and then down Times Square and oh, it's somewhere else. It was absolutely amazing. The cheer squad have no idea how important they are. Without them today, I, I would have finished, but it would have been tougher than what it was. When I came around that corner here on to 42nd Street and saw the sea of black, it was like, Wow, we're doing this, we can finish. They were phenomenal, whistles were blowing, pom-poms were flying, they had signs, and now just the emotion of it, and just seeing them, and just that for me will stay with me forever, actually, that was brilliant. Jimmy and I wanted to run together, 
okay? And because um, I wanted to finish the finishing line with him. I'm gonna get emotional about this because it really did matter to me. But Jimmy's back went about four miles, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. So we ended up um, walking. So we got to the middle of Manhattan Bridge and the decision was made. Jimmy made the decision. He said, you know, go on. So I went on and throughout it all, I was and honestly thinking, oh my God, he's hurt his back. What's gonna happen? There was, a, there was a suggestion I wouldn't, I'd have to pull out. And I remember thinking of all the people in all the wall that would have wanted to do this, many couldn't and haven't. There was never a moment that I wasn't going to finish. But also I didn't have said, no, we, we both got, I got to the end, we both cried. And I think you could argue by splitting that, it made the finish even better and even more special. My favourite bit was seeing people achieve something they have worked so hard for for nearly a year. When we went through the finish line together and to see her face, because you could see the joy in her face, because she did work really hard to get round, oh, it was superb. It was absolutely superb. It's the greatest buzz you'll ever have in your life. It doesn't matter whether you do one mile, two miles, three miles, or 13.1. Like when you're running over that finishing line, it is the greatest buzz you'll ever have. What we see as a charity, we see often profound change. Now, profound change to the bystander might not be very obvious, but just for people to feel confident about themselves, how they carry themselves, how they speak about themselves, how they are around others, they're the real specific obvious changes. A lot of the guys, it is quite profound in how they are. Just, it's just confidence about themselves and their sense of worth is massive. And that's, for us that know people, is really evident. It's actually quite a beautiful thing. I think it's quite remarkable when you take off judgment, limits, and tell people you believe in them, and treat them with kindness, what they can achieve. I think we've seen that today. I think we've seen that across the last 10 years. And I think, to a certain extent, as much as we know and see it, we probably won't fully realise the extent of how it's impacted people. I think today, in the last 10 years, the charity's created moments and memories with family, friends, various organisations that will live with me personally, but also with them people for hopefully a lifetime. Go on, Father! Go on, boy! Going back to, if you like, the aspirations of the charity, what we're trying to do every day, this is staff and people we get to see make it that special for people at the same time we need to go bigger and i don't know what that's going to be but we need to because we need that we need to we need to raise the bar because we talk about blue sky all the time for, for us and people in a weird way this is like a beginning not an end um and i'm incredibly excited Be the guiding lights we share, and may we always remember that each story deserves our care. For in our human journey, we all need love and grace, so let us be kind to one another and create a better place.